This is Every Creature Commission Television, and we welcome you to the Restoration Program. <laughs> Amen, Lindsay. Uh -huh. What what a program we did last time. Oh, it was great. On Elam's turning away from the original founder, from taking on an indefinite Bible. Remember, we commonly prove this because this program deals with primary evidence, secondary evidence, and most important revelation from God. Amen. Look. We don't deal with theory here. We are giving the voice of the Lord, not by might or by power, but by, by my spirit, spirit says the, the Lord. Lord. And we have proven the biggest conspiracy, the stealing of the word of God from most what's known as churches. We have given you this Nestle Alan text which is the backup to NIV, NASB, NKJV, the message, GNV, TLB, on, TLB. Good news that you said that one. Yeah, GMB. Uh, and whatever else you might be cooking up at the moment. NASB, ah. <coughs> RSV, it's, it's all there. Oh, dear, oh, From dear. From the 1881, Weskers and Hortlew spiritualists. Look, they say in here, it's indefinite. But what George Jeffries had in the founding of Elam was the inerrant word of God. And it is that which we stand on today in have the name of Jesus. Have you ever noticed about modern churches? I'm sorry to have to say this, especially charismatic type churches or Pentecostal <laughs> churches that have gone charismatic. Yeah. Have you ever noticed how woolly they are? That's because they've got a woolly word. So yeah. they've ended up with a woolly God. Yeah. And that's why they, they've got no clear statements of faith very often. Yeah. You know, they've got no clear anything. And they look, Lindsay, to put out fleeces constantly. Oh, they do. Because they look for the physical, whereas faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Have you got it? They put out fleeces. Yes, they what do. What did you say about them? They'd gone woolly. So what ha, do they ha, do? Ha. They put out Places. Places. Well, it's about time they started becoming a bit sheepish and showing a bit of humility then, isn't it? Well, the, you're not wrong there. All we like sheep have gone astray, gone astray and, and turned sure, everyone to their you. own way. And the Lord has laid on him, Jesus Christ, our Savior, mm. the iniquity of us all. Now, Lindsay, tonight's program is called Elam's Turning Away from the Biblical Pattern. Right. How are we going to prove this? One. Through W.A.C. Rose, One Lord, One Faith, giving doctrine from the time of Elam, Elam's foundings. That's the first mm -hmm. thing. Next, Alan Kern's wonderful book, Apostles of Error. We're dealing with neo-orthodoxy, which is what has come in. We then look in a section called Requisite Conditions by George Jeffries in Healing Rays. We then come to Paul Smith's New Evangelicalism, the New World Order, in which he has a section called The Era of Replacement Theology, which is mm. what Elam stood for when we were at the college. And then finally, back to our old favorites, Set Your House in Order by Albert Edser, is chapter 8, Sex, S-E-C-T-S. -E and society so we've got a lot to get through Lindsay tonight Exciting father stuff. we come in the name of jesus the name above every name that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow and father thou art calling us to see to it that real elam churches are restored all over the land and all over the world standing on the inerrant word of God, standing on the word which was given through George Jeffries rather than the rebellion which we've been exposing in these programs. Mm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. First thing, Lindsay, chapter 39 of this WAC row, One Lord, One Faith, is really interesting. Remember, the big bus stop, the main subject was over um, church government. Mm. And he talks about 
organization. He says organism or organization, organi oh. organism oh. or organization which. That's interesting. Now, he comes into a section here where he relates organization to a mode of experience. Now, I believe George Jeffries would have stood for this in the area of revelation from God. Yes. What, in fact, Elam had done and made it into a rational committee, which yes. Jesus called Satan when Peter tried that. And W.A.C. Rowe declared, of course, we can understand that what is probably meant, although not fully understood, is that human organization is not suitable to a divine organism. Mm. So he did not see it as there being an organization from the top down. He declared that as not suitable. For what we're dealing with with the church is a divine organism. A living organism. Exactly. He says the church of Jesus Christ is his body and therefore requires a divine organization which is appropriate to its need. Mm. But it would be better for us to examine the principles from the beginning. And he covers three points here. Revelation, assimilation, and expression. Mm. Revelation, assimilation, and expression. What word this is for all of us who run Christian ministries, Christian charities the day. Mm. This is a great blessing. On the subject of revelation, he wrote, every type and manifestation of life reveals its nature and characteristics by its organization or lack of it. Each organism makes some kind of expression upon its environment and leaves the evidences of its activity and the channels by which it operates to be seen clearly. The conies organize their homes of strength to cover their vulnerabilities and weakness, Proverbs 30, 26. The ants reveal their wisdom by their fabulous cooperation to balance their minuteness. They plan and organize so that they may store up the wealth of summer for the dearth of winter, Proverbs 6, mm -hmm. 6 and 30, 25. Industry through organization is the glory of the housewife, Proverbs 31, 10 to Absolutely. 31. That was written some years ago before you all start kicking off. Industry through organization is still true of us, though, It dear. is, whether you be man or woman, actually. Mm. But I know where this is coming from. Remember, this will be written in the 1930s. Well, it was a wonderful uh, chapter in Proverbs, that one, but mm. that's... We better not go on. That's a digression. Efficient and intensive gardening is a high illustration of prior planting and continuous organization. Mm. Ecclesiastes 2, 4 to 5, Jeremiah 29, 5, Ezekiel 28, 26, John 15, 1 to 8. 1 to 8. Mm -hmm. The husbandman reveals his character and ability in his garden. In the same way, the organism of the Church of Jesus Christ, which is his body, will reveal the divine life of the headship of Christ in wise and provident arrangements for all its activities. Yes. If the members are yielded to the complete lordship of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. All matters respecting the church should not reveal poorer or lesser arrangements for the smooth and blessed working of the Holy Spirit than are related in comparison with other companies of people whose gathering together is for more natural or worldly purposes. Mm. The Lord Jesus himself draws ascension to such a contrast in Luke 16, 8. So we're dealing with a different entity. Now, remember the Elam Committee were then using legal forces against Lord Jeffrey, Lord, uh, George Jeffries. It's just horrendous. We're dealing with the Lordship of Christ. In effect, they were taking Christ Jesus to court. Mm. It's very serious and very, very rebellious. Now, on the subject of assimilation, W.A.C. Rowe, 
wrote, <laughs> W-A-C, row wrote, organization is a planned arrangement in which the living organism, low or high, may appropriate from the environments immediately external to itself that which it needs to assimilate for its own sustenance and development. The spider, by the marvels of its instinct, knows just where to set its silken web by straining it in perfect art in order that it may sustain itself. Proverbs 30, 28. The Church of Jesus Christ, knowing the power of concentrated prayer, knows how to plan beforehand where and when and how to meet in order that it may obtain and assimilate the vital power that it needs. You know, over the last couple of days, we prayed for a lady diagnosed with terminal bone cancer. Mm -hmm. And I knew this morning that intercession of the Lord his compassion has not changed. Uh, man, that's right. And what happens is there's an intercession constantly to the Father in the name of Jesus. And the Lord shared that with me, that intercession mm. going on today as regards to Maria of mm. Dumfries. And so we battle in the heavenly realm, but we look to get to that point of intercession to being one with the Savior, the one intercessor, the, the, the Spirit and the Son, interceding to the Father. And we know and know and know the battle has been won. Yes. It belongs to the Lord. And yes. this is the assimilation W.A.C. Rowe is talking about. And finally, he writes on the subject of expression, a person may be saturated in music and have a golden voice, but the predominant impulse is the expressive flow of mellow song. Yes. The singer is in demand, yet in order to attain the highest possible expression, there are years of organized training before the song can be given to the multitude. Absolutely. At each step, there is complex organization right to the point of the public song. The arrangements for time, place, and conditions of gatherings for a accompanist and instrument, for the printed music and all the arrangements of the gathered company must be made before the organism can be given its full and lovely expression. Now the Church of Christ has a matchless experience of a wonderful Saviour, glorious Lord. It burns to tell out the good news. It must express itself and therefore as one outlet, the members in a particular locality arrange the best place to give the witness in the open air and the best time, which may be regularly week by week and decide to gather together in the best way and to conduct their witness in the most effective form. This is the life of Christ in expressing itself through simple, but potent organization. Mm. That sums up the way it ought to be. Instead, we've got a despotic power which has taken over from the ministry of George Jeffries, yes. which is witnessed to this day. All this has been part of neo-orthodoxy. And just like Paul Smith has done, in New Evangelicalism, the New World Order, Alan Kearns, Apostles of Error, Lindsay, relates this modern era, and I see this as coming well and truly into Elam when we were there in the early 90s. Mm. And we didn't know about this then, but we can see, looking back, this is exactly what happened. And guess All we who knew. he mentions, Lindsay? Guess who he mentions in there? Carl Barth. Oh, no. And He's everywhere. Remember, Daniel Fuller, Fuller Seminary, went to Carl Barth yes. in Switzerland. He also mentions Emil Brunner, who was also taught at the Elam Bible College. We heard more of oh. these than we ever did of George Jeffries. We hardly ever looked at this and forever book. was looking at the higher and lower critics mm -hmm. now alan kearns declares there came the devil's next attack 
the offer of a compromise or conciliation. That's that right. is to the world's thinking. The academic rational thinking was to be combined with a form of spirituality, mm. but a form of spirituality that denies the power. He says it arose with men like Karl Barth and Emil Brunner, spread to many others in Europe and America. They claimed that, having been trained in liberalism, they were now repudiating it. They yeah. emphasized the transcendence of God. Now, the old line modernists has brought God and man so much together that God was confused with man and man was confused with God, a good way of putting it. Now, by serving man, you were serving God. And when you looked into the eyes of your neighbor, you saw God. Now, liberalism, says Alan Kearns, almost became a form of pantheism. God everywhere, God in everything. Yes. Everything is God and God is Which everything. Which is new age, by the and way. And described by Alan Kearns as liberalism. Mm. Now came the neo-orthodox theologians and they said, no, God is absolutely transcendent. God, to use Barth's phrase, was wholly other. Now, the neo-Orthodox message was that you must not confuse God with man or man with God. Sounded very good. And in addition, Bart claimed he was returning to the theology of the Reformation, mm -hmm. especially to the strong and scriptural theology of John Calvin. It sounded wonderful, says Alan Kearns. But the trouble was that according to the neo-Orthodox, the Bible was not the word of God. Mm. And it is those who believe the Bible or parts of the inerrant word are not the word of God who run Elam today. Mm. I witnessed it. Such was the change from what George Jeffrey stood for. Quoting Exodus fifteen twenty six, Lindsay. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and wilt do that which is right in his sight and wilt give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Exodus fifteen twenty six. Now George Jeffreys knew his Old Testament. He knew it as types of Christ looking to the day of our redemption, mm -hmm. but understood from the Old Testament, which he took as in Adam, that is without error, fully anointed of God, just as much as the New Testament, mm. that he said this, the conditions under which the saints of the Old Testament could claim bodily healing included the keeping of the moral law, the ceremonial laws, and the laws which govern the physical condition of the people. All of which, he says, are applicable to the saints of the 20th century, and we say 21st, except those that have served their day and are definitely ruled out in the New Testament. Saints of the Old Testament have to observe the conditions under which the great healing covenants operated. They were granted a lord of immunity from the prevalent diseases that surrounded them. And the little word if, though only of two letters, was the key that unlocked the sluices and allowed the free flow of divine healing and health in their day. Now, George Jeffries continues. Obedience to God's moral law was the ground on which the children of Israel could claim bodily healing. That's it, yes. The breaking of the moral law has throughout the history of the human race been visited with all kinds of bodily afflictions that are both fearful mm -hmm. and loathsome, hence the pandemic today. Sin, which is defined in the New Testament as the transgression of the law, is the cause of all evil from which all, or mortals have suffered 
Now, the great healing covenant meant to the Israelites relief from its awful consequences and immunity from sickness and disease, provided they complied with the conditions that were attached to it. Now, today, we have a coronation service, a coronation oath, took place in 1953, which gave the same conditions to Great Britain. The monarch promised God to fulfill certain things, but the nations yes. not obeyed. Hence, the if clause has not been complied with. The coronation service of the British monarch being the same as that of Solomon in the Old Testament. Thus, we have here a situation where the church is not taking this up because it has bowed down to an indefinite word Yet the word of God, as depicted by Jeffries, was well and truly definite, well and truly covenantal, that if we gave all our lives to God, he would give all his life mm. to us. And within the context of Elam, and we witnessed this, were some major errors and major problems. One such, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, was in the area of replacement theology. Now, Paul Smith in New Evangelicalism, the New World Order, he said this, the 16th century Protestant reformers had given up on the nation of Israel coming back to their land since the U Jews had been dispersed for 1,500 years. Yes. Influenced by Roman Catholic eschatology... Roman Catholic eschatology, exactly what was taught at Elam, the reformers developed what is called replacement theology. They concluded that the Old Testament promises to Israel were now to the church because God was finished with Israel. This made end times theology confusing to those who failed to believe what the Bible said about the literal divine regathering and restoration of Israel. Mm. Now, there was a huge hoo ha, of course, with George Jeffries at the time over what became known as British Israel, um, the lost tribes being Ephraim and Manasseh. Yes. But we had to place that confusion into the context of the Second World War. There was, unlike today in Britain a, and America, a more patriotism in America, by the way, than in Britain at the moment. But at the time, both Britain and America were very, very built up to take on an evil called Hitler. Yes. That is when America joined the war, of course. There was some resistance at first. But once America was in, it was in in its covenant with Great Britain. And this was being seen as the coming together of Manasseh and Ephraim to wow. save the Jews and to form the promised land. Now, Jeffries was very much a part of that. So for Elam to bring in replacement theology was going right against Jeffries' mm. cause. And his stand at that time for British Israel, seeing Manasseh and Ephraim coming together for one purpose. Now, what we've mm -hmm. got to ask is, why is it, Lindsay, that in every war, whatever happens, Britain and America end up being together as one? Because of covenant, isn't it? The Mayflower Compact, mm. because of the Puritans. And Jeffries was going along that Puritan root. What we have today, though, within the neo-Orthodox church, as it's known, what we call the emerging church, that following Karl Barth, is something very, very different. Now, this is summed up by Paul Smith when he says supporters of a new world order are left with a critical choice. One, you put your trust and hope in the hands of the humanist elite who believe they know what is best for mankind. Mm. Or two, you put your trust and hope in the creator God and what he has promised to accomplish in the last days 
as recorded in the Allen Bible, which is, of course, rejected by Elam. So they come under category one of the humanist. Mm -hmm. Now, the creator God, says Paul Smith, has promised to accomplish in the last days, as recorded in the Inerrant Bible, which may soon take place in our time or in the near future. Mm. Remember the four square gospel. It's today even called Elam Four Square Gospel Alliance, although they deny it. Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Healer, <coughs> Jesus the soon coming king jesus the baptizer in the holy ghost what you have here today in elam is a turning away from this bible pattern yes. so we then deal today with elam as a sect or a cult and this is a whole chapter sex and society s-e-c-t-s in set your house in order lindsay now, Albert Edser talks of a Dr. Brian Wilson's letter to Commander McMillan, which he'd previously referred to. We previously referred to one of the last 27 programs on Elam. Um, chapter 6 of his book, if you're following his book. He says, there now follows the review of the Elam section of Sex and Society. First published in 1961, Derisively dismissed by Desmond Cartwright in The Great Evangelist without a single fact having been challenged by him. Mr. Cartwright's measure can be assessed when he refers to Dr. Wilson as an inexperienced student. So a huge battleground is going on here. We've seen, as in previous programs, the legal threats against George Jeffries, a deal being made so that he wouldn't, in effect, be bankrupted, but his buildings which he founded were taken away and the congregations had to leave with them. What we're dealing with here is something, Lindsay, so evil. Absolutely. Now, Albert Edser is getting to grips with this. He says this, relating to um, a review published in The Pattern in October 1961, in which is called the takeover technique in modern church history, transition from charisma, that means the spirit, not charismatic as we understand it, from charisma to legalism. Who wrote this book, Commander D. H. McMillan, MBE, uh, RNR, and FRCS? He wrote this Nothing is more lamentable than schism in the body of Christ. But it is interesting and profitable for Christians to study the mechanism and spirit that leads to an event that must be regarded as a tragic crucifixion of that body considered collectively within the historical process. The Roman church claiming that she alone is the mystical body has to admit the schism of the Greek church in their manifestly false and carnal conception of Catholicism, Luther, when asked to define the true church, replied, the consensus fidelium, meaning that our Lord himself and the apostles, the sum of regenerate souls in whom is the Spirit of Christ. Certainly, all those who have honestly and finally responded to the Savior's call to the whosoever will belong to the mystical body in the sight of God. And human organizations can at best provide temporary scaffoldings for this divine building. That's right. Now, when the last of the elect is numbered, the scaffoldings will be removed and finally discarded mm -hmm. with all their various designations, thus revealing her in her res resurrection likeness to a risen master and Lord. Now, Dr. Mm -hmm. Brian Wilson, who was a lecturer at Leeds University and the writer of this remarkable social study has considered three sects, S-E-C-T, or what we commonly call cults. Two of them, Christian science and Christadelphianism, by their formal denialty, denial of the divinity and Godhead of the Lord Jesus, being outside the traditional Christian faith of the apostles. 
The remaining Christian body discussed is the Elam Foursquare Gospel Church, with which this review is particularly concerned as it reveals and illustrates in modern times familiar tendencies and patterns of power previously yes. manifest in the apostolic, primitive, and medieval church history. Mm. Now, the author has apparently spent considerable time in intimate contact with each of these groups in order to enable him to make his survey of each of them as accurate as possible. Now, one remembers St. Paul's prophetic injunction to the elders of Ephesus concerning those who would disrupt the self-governing, charismatic, meaning spirit-indwelt communities he had so lovingly founded when he describes as grievous wolves not yes. sparing the flock. It is probable that as a Roman citizen, he used the word wolves cautiously, but there's but designedly to indicate the later usurpation of Christendom by Roman legalism. Mm. For the symbol of the seven hilled city was the she wolf that supposedly yes, suckered its child founders, who are Romulus they? and Remus. Go for it. And there was a bronze statue of that self same she wolf with the uh, suckling the twins, the twins of these, actually above the entrance to the Roman Senate House, by the there way. There you go. With SPQR as well, Senatus Populus Quir Romanus. Early in the, well done, early in the third century, the Latin father, Tertullian of Carthage, left the Church of Rome because it had exiled the spirit and joined yes. a pentecostal group called the montanists who were at Ooh, first orthodox them. and even rigorous but later exhibited excesses with which he was not associated mm. now the early father hippolytus had also mm. at this time been outwitted by the clever legalism and committee procedure of calixtus who by short practice had worked himself by lobbying into the seat of the Roman bishop, carrying within him the seeds of the false penitential system and ecclesiastical domination that was the flower in a sinister medieval tyranny that only a Luther under God could challenge successfully yes. with the hammer of the word. Yes. This is what we're talking about in relation to Elam. <laughs> mm. The hammer of the word. That's what we're doing. And we've been hammering. We sure have. We're going to knock it down. Weeks. Yeah. Yet under the swaggering counterfeit of the truth, the faithful of the true mystical body, always a minority, witness offered even unto death, as the Roman legal experts exploited church politics and the votes and arms of the humble faithful towards papal tyranny, and one day Bishop, later Pope Damascus, had the satisfaction of having his supremacy established over his rival, Yosinus, by leaving the defeated corpses of 160 of his opponents uh. in the Basilica of Cyrenicus, a church where the ambitious ecclesiastics and their followers had been in conference. Now, the spirit indwelt faithful will again outwitted by the worldly wise of this world in the visible church, aptly named Lindsay. <laughs> the Nicolaitan. Oh, yeah. oh dear, it's them. In oh, the dear. mystical Greek language of Revelation 2 6, the word meaning lords of the people. That's right, people conquer. Hence, what we've got is the community church and all that nothing new horrendous now just before the reformation it would seem that the sons of the holy ghost had been erased and their witness silenced forever john huss despite the same conduct had been burnt at the council of constance in 1415 oh, no. by order of a totalitarian church with full legal appro approval and the bones of john wickliffe were soon afterwards dug up and burnt at Lutterworth by a further unanimous legal decision of the same conference. What could men of the Spirit do except rely solely on the written word of God as did their master? Yes. 
So with Luther and the Word, the monolithic legalism of the medieval church was destined to come to a shattering end. And when the reformer bravely cried before the glittering and fully legal assembly of bishops and princes, Here I stand, I can do no other. Her doom was sealed, her system broken, her grip over the faith for once her prey smashed open forever. Now Dr. Wilson, in his study, reveals an unwitting recapitulation of this age. The old contention between men of the spirit and word only on one hand and men who seek bureaucratic control over the faithful by legal instruments and secular procedures on the other. Yeah, this is present day it's, Elam. It's, it's the same. It's been there forever since Jesus, yes. Jesus versus the Pharisees he and the Sadducees. He outlines this age-old pattern with mm. great precision mm. in his purely scientific, factual, social analysis and historical sketch of the Pentecostal origins and later developments, the Elam Foursquare Gospel Church, admittedly founded by George Jeffries over half a century ago. Now, Dr. Wilson's thesis is completely objective, and to the best of my knowledge, he himself is unknown to the various leaders involved in the tragic story of schism in a Bible-loving Christian community. Mm. He depicts George Jeffries as a very intense Christian young man who received his call by the Holy Spirit and the Word to build a work for God, what he believed to be the last days of the Christian era. Yes. Hence the four square gospel, Jesus the soon coming king. The writer portrays him from first to last as earnest, transparently honest, never doubting for a moment that his associates mm. were like himself, enthusiastic, mm. mutually loyal, and zealous for the glory of Christ alone. And again and again, the writer illustrates the earnest desire of George Jeffries that his spirit-indwelt community should never become a sect of perdition, claiming to be the only way of salvation, but as a movement destined to bless the whole universal church, mm. Prepare her for the second appearance of the Lord at the end of Gentile history in this century. Jeffries definitely restored the characteristic doctrine of Luther and Calvin that the believer could have the assurance of his salvation. Mm. Wilson writes, There is here a liberality which is alien to the typical sex. In a yes. sense, Pentecostalists regard themselves as a specially privileged order within the body of the church, which is the collectivity of all true believers. Luther's Consensus Fidelium, reviewer. The writer's statements on page 19, the partaking of wine and bread is understood simply as a memorial is inadequate. For in true Pentecostal meetings, the bread and wine are effectual signs and pledges of the benefits the passion of Christ to the believer and the real presence of Christ, That's it, while exactly. not in the elements, is specially present in the souls of the faithful celebrants. Mm. Its theology is not Zwinglian. Now oh. we're going to cover more of this next week. You see, what the Lord's been speaking to me over this. And he's telling me something, and we're going to start this real soon. I've written it down prophetically this morning. We're to start real Elam churches around the country. And when we say we, don't mean Lindsay and I are going to go week after week. We are, we're, look, the body of Christ, we would like you to contact us, ecctv4219 at gmail.com. Contact us if you're in an area Get people together around what George Jeffrey stood for. And mm -hmm. you start your own bank account. You start your, get your own building, hire a building, buy a building, rent a building, whatever. The building is the body of Christ. Whatever bricks there are doesn't matter. Just keeps the cold away. What we're dealing with is the body of Christ. You contact us. We're going to be setting these up 
but they're going to be autonomous units as George Jeffries wanted in the Bible pattern. As Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, we'll write to the church, for example, at Castle Douglas. Mm. There's a prophetic word where people can come together and allow the spirit to move without secular authority quenching the spirit. What do you say to that, Lindsay? Absolutely. It's a wonderful, wonderful. Hallelujah. Summary. What a word that is. It is. We need to restore Elam, hence the restoration program. Mm. We need to do it now. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We praise you, Father, mm. for this word which thou hast given us. You've called us to restore, to repair the breach, to bring Elam into the calling which thou gave its founder. George Jeffries. Mm. We give you praise. We give you amen glory. Amen and amen. That's right. Hallelujah. We do. Praise you. Thank you for joining us tonight on the Restoration Program. Contact us, ECCTV4219 at gmail.com. We'll see you soon. God bless. Bye.